Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, the webinar series uh, Building Blocks for Tax. Uh, we, uh, we have today uh, uh, capture, capturing the uh, roadshow, uh, roadshow till now, and we will be uh, addressing uh, the, the road towards a co compliance model between tax and tax authorities. Uh, uh, between tax authorities and taxpayers. Uh, my name is Dave Heibrechtse. I'm here together with my colleague uh, Victor and we will be addressing uh, these topics to you today and uh, give an interesting visualization of uh, the last eight webinars and summarize the uh, takeaways from a practical perspective. So let's start with uh, the next slide. Uh, we will address a concept called uh, the tax compliant car wash where you start with dirty data and you clean it through a car wash various applications uh, to become clean data ready to file with the tax authorities we will uh, visualize how the tax authorities are working on their 2030 model uh, take a singapore perspective which is already looking a little bit like that future picture uh, Victor uh, will will address the Brazilian perspective, then we will take you through the concept where we say, okay, all these uh, software packages and functionalities, can I use them in a turnkey uh, projects where a digital transformation of tax workflows uh, takes place, and then finally the key take takeaways. So that's the agenda of today. Let's start with the next slide. So this is a, a visualization. Some uh, of you might be familiar with it. it it's the uh, the whole uh, structuring of data. Uh, very important in uh, the tax world these days is whether you, as an in-house tax person, have access to usable data and accessible data, and and data which you can. Uh, make ready for the tax authorities. So this car wash is, is, a, is a metaphor to use to explain to other people what you're actually doing with the data. Um, building data pools, uh, creating an architecture which, which is uh, allowing you to access the data uh, as much as possible in, a, in an automated manner. Uh, I know a lot of in-house people are spending 50% or more of their time on collecting data, and the right data and the right quality of data. Um, a lot of that uh, through car wash type of approach can be can be automated, uh, can be become an automated process. Um, yeah, the, the, the data, why are we uh, collecting all that data? Well, to, that's to fill all these uh, things on the, on the right, the CBCR, the SAFT file, the VAT, the return customs, corporate income tax, transfer pricing, and even annual reports are, are part of that whole data cycle. Um, so you, you try to push that data into form but before you do that you typically need to clean it you need to say okay if i have a, a, a data cell which is uh, visualizing 100 and you get three other sources and one of them tells you the the entry point here should be uh, 102 which of the experts tax experts in your organization is going to step in uh, in a fairly automated manner you might hope to say 102 is the right number and that's that's what we mean with cleaning data sometimes there's conflicting entries uh, only look at the accounts payables and accounts receivables on 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 two group entities uh, trading with each other uh, that's not always uh, a guarantee for an aligned position then uh, the XML conversion is is really two steps in this in this car wash. The the generic XML conversion the OECD has prescribed uh, has has outlined and has converted to sort of global tax uh, tax uh, standards to uh, to get your data into an e format. Um, but that's not 
everything because uh, on top of that, a lot of tax authorities have made it what, what I call the, the last 10 centimeters to the digital mailbox of the local tax inspector. They've created a, a um, own uh, API, own uh, registration process, uh, login process, uh, validation, verification process uh, for who can actually enter this digital mailbox. So that's the extra XML features you, uh, in a lot of cases, have to deal with. And that might be very, and it is actually very country specific. And there's some commonalities, but there's also quite some, some differences. And then uh, the, the full compliance is of the clean data risk analyzed filed with the tax uh, uh, administration with a minimum of human intervention um, does deliver a signal back that your data package has been successfully filed with the relevant tax authorities. Then it closes the whole cycle uh, of your uh, tax car wash or car wash for taxes. So this is rough cut the, uh, the, the introduction of what car wash is doing. If we move to the next slide. Uh, this, this is again the same picture, but we now are, are looking at uh, the, the various approaches where we say, okay, you have the process of structuring the data, pushing the data into forms, the generic and specific XML, the digital mailbox, the, at the back of the digital mailbox, the data analytics being done by the tax authorities and the data validation uh, and, 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 and even data exchange, which is not on this picture uh, of tax relevant data between uh, uh, government one, uh, tax authorities one with uh, country one, with the tax authorities in country two. So we, we have been uh, running various uh, webinars. Uh, our 7 fat is a end-to-end -end FAT technology tool. Um, Eclair is a uh, what I would call next generation of uh, uh, VAT agencies and, and custom agencies. Pfizer, as you can see, is, is mostly active behind the digital mailbox. Um, TPG is, is a typical tool for automating uh, transfer pricing workflows. So, uh, there's, there's many of these, but uh, TPG is, is one of the ones which already participated in. Uh, in the first webinar series. Onera X is a very interesting one. It's a, an enhanced tax engine within SAP, and, and that means it, uh, it can immediately uh, link with uh, information within SAP and spit out uh, the, the after reworking that data, uh, the, the outputs, uh, which again get posted or are posted directly into an SAP environment. So it's not like a lot of tools these days, first have to extract the data from the, your ERP environment, from your SAPs and Oracle and, uh, and uh, Exact Online or, or, or Xero, whatever ERP packages you run on. Uh, means they're mostly very well in uh, structuring of data, uh, pushing data into forms. Onera X is uh, sort of the sub three version all the way to sub for HANA, so they can, they can manage also the various uh, generation and, and versions of, uh, of SAP. Then 4Q, 4Q is a, uh, a spin-off of GE, which is basically one big engine, which from, takes from your general ledger, all the costs relating to intercompany service charges. Uh, so it, it assumes a certain structuring of data through a general ledger is already there, and then it accumulates that information into um, uh, the, the, got, the, the cost centers of cost to be recharged to other group companies. It applies, as, as we know, from uh, into company charges, service charges. It applies the, the correct allocation key on the cost uh, center to get the cost allocated to the group entities at the right proper uplift, profit uplift. But also what it does, it also generates invoices with the appropriate uh, VAT um, 
VAT rate on it and, and is generating those invoices. And uh, the, I think it's a full cycle, uh, full service of, uh, of uh, a full cycle, I should say, of uh, steps which run uh, everything into a, a very operational transfer pricing system um, and takes care of your, uh, your proper uh, VAT returns at the, at the same time. Uh, SASFIA is a, is a um, uh, call it a, a business uh, BI tool on top of your uh, ERP. So it again, like most of the tools, it extracts data, allows you to manipulate the data, to segment uh, financial data into uh, one segment per PNL uh, relevant for one activity, and, and, and so it has a lot of dashboarding at the same time. So, in a lot of cases, SASVI is used for uh, business analytics by the management, and uh, in this particular case, we've been using it for um, an, an operational transfer pricing analytics. So, to see whether the right price, the right margin is left with the relevant company, and if not, what adjustments to make in an automated uh, manner. Uh, so, it also checks whether your operational, your business model uh, reporting, uh, financial reporting is synced with your, with your, with your transfer pricing system. So again, a very operational cycle. So what we've done in the, the green color and red color is, is saying, okay, what functionality does each of these softwares bring, bring to the table? And uh, this is rough cut, so there's always refinement and there's always a, a, a more complex version you can configure, which does more. But here you see that uh, the R, R7 tool of SIGNET does do an end-to-end, -end, but only till the digital mailbox. So it files with the digital mailbox, but doesn't go beyond. Um, uh, Eclair, more or less the same. Also mostly focus on um, on um, uh, VAT and customs within the European Union. Uh, on the other side, if you look at Visor, Visor is very complementary to, for example, uh, R7 or Eclair. So it it, cov it covers some overlap, but it also covers the um, the space behind the digital mailbox. So if uh, I talked about turnkey, and you will hear that back a few times, if I talk about turnkey, what TPA is doing more and more is helping uh, our clients to get to the right configuration of software packages uh, and uh, create collaborations between these software functionalities to come up with a turnkey or end-to-end -end solution for a specific uh, corporate. And that could even go uh, uh, not only to corporates, but that could even be beneficial for tax authorities as well. So let's assume we take the R7 tool, uh, we build a connector between the R7 and Visor, and that means the accounts payable and accounts receivable information in the, the R7 VAT tool generates to fill a VAT return is being uh, validated by Pfizer at the back end of the, uh, the digital mailbox. And, and subsequently, some of that information is even shared across uh, different uh, countries. That means I have a true end-to-end -end solution, which not only benefits the corporates, but it also could benefit the, the, the tax authorities. And we will give you a few visualization of, uh, of countries which are already um, running that co-compliance model, as we, as we call it. So they open the lines for, um, uh, they create an open API or connector structure where companies can lock in and co-develop uh, a, a common data exchange platform uh, to, to come to an integrated, fully automated, without human intervention uh, solution. Um, and another example uh, to, uh, to 
to integrate could be if you take Onera X, if Onera X takes up the base information, cleans up the ba base information, for example, for your country by country reporting, and you connect it with TPG, TPG accepts the, the extracts the spreadsheet from Onera X and starts loading it in, into its engine for the country by country reporting, runs an outlier analysis at DPG, converts it into XML table one, two, and three of uh, your country by country, and then subsequently files it with the tax authorities. And you could even go beyond that. You could say, okay, but then Pfizer behind the digital mailbox can. Uh, do the validation of all the data in table one, two, and three of the country by country reporting. So this is, uh, uh, I call it Lego for tax or building blocks for tax. This is a, um, a building configuration to get to turnkey solutions for, uh, for corporates as well as for uh, tax authorities. Okay, I forgot to uh, mention that if anyone has a question, please share that and uh, either I see them popping up on my chat or Rosanna, uh, who is the marketing lady at TPA, uh, facilitate, facilitating this session will uh, will bring the question to, uh, to my attention. So please uh, feel free to raise any questions. Rosanna, can we go to the next slide? So here is a different view of the same world. And what, what I mean with that is here we, we look at on the right end uh, with, with gray, uh, we, we look at the site and the functionality we, we were just going through. So the dirty data to clean data to digital mailbox. You see the points uh, on the right uh, and, and and we call that there's a single source of data. So data needs to be, the data architecture and the data management needs to be organized in such a way that the, the gray zone is an integrated approach to data sets and uh, to cleaning data, uh, the car wash uh, concept, and, and to making sure it fits the forms you're supposed to be filling out. Uh, one thing, one funny thing here is uh, in this this whole production cycle is typically dirty data once it's cleaned gets filled into a form, which is a little bit awkward because if you fill it into VAT form, you you fill the cells of that VAT return. Then to get to an XML data set, you first have to pull out all the data from the form and then convert it in strings of data, uh, uh, putting it into the XML data format. So my expectation on the co-compliance model is that uh, the fill, filling out of forms will, will be a step which in the future will not happen anymore. It's a, not a waste of time, but uh, only when needed, certain cells of a VAT form, corporate income tax form, need to be offered to a corporate income tax expert or a VAT expert to validate whether the cell should say 100 or 102, as I explained in the beginning when we were addressing cleaning of data. This is the data flow, but who is it, who's actually controlling it? Who's running the, the this whole cycle? So then we turn to the left, to the blue zone. The blue zone is is really about the single source of information or um, another way of saying it that you could say I have different dashboards and different work spot uh, configurations for different layers in the organization or even uh, outside the organization because dashboarding will uh, more and more become um, a a game of uh, corporates explaining it in-house, but also explaining it on the website of uh, of the company to the public domain. Uh, that's uh, the, the, the whole trend of, uh, for example, Barclays, obviously that's a regulated bank, has to publish its CBCR on, uh, on its website. Uh, so if you do the single source of information, the single source means the only version of the truth. That's another way of, uh, of looking at it. Um, you see here a compliance tracker, the CT, uh, which is a 
um, one of the tools we, we've been uh, uh, using during the webinar series as well. It's a universal mobile compliance tracker. So it is a process tool which, pro which tracks actionable insights. So local finance and lo local tax compliance people will know whether the VAT return for Hungary uh, needs to be filed and, and uh, need, data needs to be picked up and um, the, the data needs to be uh, validated uh, before the uh, VAT return in Hungary is being completed and being filed and then the signal they get back from the tax authorities is captured in this uh, compliance tracker and then the person running that exercise actually gets a signal for that. Uh, that these that these compliance trackers uh, they use concept like RACI to uh, per document allocate the right tasks and duties within the organization. Then I'll, at the bottom there's dashboard for tax authorities and validation. This is uh, and, and there's also Power BI which gives a different dashboards for, for example, the lead tax compliance team, the audit committee, and the C-suite. They they obviously want to don't want to know whether the <clears throat> fat return in Hungary uh, is in stage A, B, C, or D, but they want to know whether it's done on time and uh, only want to have insight in the outliers. Uh, so the reporting to that group will be totally different. <clears throat> There's still um, a DIA, which is a digital intelligent agent, uh, call it a intelligent space, which, uh, which is dynamic of nature, but feeds things into you like uh, Norway imposes a safti file uh, to be filed uh, as from 1, 1 2020 onwards. It's that type of what we call tax technology alert information. You might want to capture that. Uh, the DL also can connect uh, to VAT rates, applicable VAT rates. So the whole VAT system uh, for platforms is, is going to change uh, July 1 onwards, which puts a lot of pressure on platforms like Zalando and uh, even Amazon. Uh, to be compliant to a new set of uh, FAT registration and FAT compliance uh, rules. Well, that intelligence can be captured there. Uh, here we put Office 365 and SharePoint as the knowledge workspace where everything gets together <clears throat> in terms of uh, communication, repository, and, and exchange. But you could also have Google uh, or other platforms which uh, which are used to connect all these single sources of uh, single source of information dashboards so that's a that's a long story but it basically tells you data on its own doesn't flow unless there's a good controllable uh, source of information through different dashboards linked to to real work spots of real people okay um, moving forward. Um, just a question, Victor, any any observations from your side so far? I'm good, very, uh, everything very clear for me, Steve. Thanks a lot. Okay. Then, um, so what's the vision of the tax administration? I had a point two on the agenda. Uh, here is a, a clear picture. You see the, 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 that the tax authorities expect to uh, interact with citizens and corporates through apps, uh, the Internet of Things, personal devices, and business management systems. So they call that, and this is an OECD publication, by the way, in uh, 20, late 2020. So it gives you what they call the vision of tax administration 3.0. Um, the, the, the top of the iceberg, uh, the tip of the iceberg here is how the interaction uh, between the tax administration and government and taxpayers actually happens and what platforms are used. But what is ha happening um, below uh, the, the water level, um, the, the surface, the water surface is, uh, is very detailed uh, where tax data gets connected to citizen data and events, to business data and events, to other agencies. Uh, uh, banks is, a, is, a, is not a, per se an agency, 
uh, but other agencies could be platforms like Amazon and, uh, and uh, um, Zalando, uh, the welfare system, retail, and uh, other international agencies uh, are, are all connecting data. So what you see a little bit as building blocks uh, by the tax authorities to build the system underwater is the digital identity of a, of a taxpayer, the data management they're running at multiple layers, the tax rule management, the new skill sets and the gov governance frameworks, which, uh, which are totally new uh, in today's world. Uh, not totally new, but uh, quite challenging from the very hierarchical uh, system we have now in place uh, in, the, in, the, in the world of uh, tax authorities. If we move to the next slide, uh, this is a little bit how uh, the, the called the left picture, the tax administration 2.0 and the right side, uh, tax administration 3.0. This is a little bit what, why, why are we doing this data-driven, this co-compliance model visualization? Because we, we are a true believer that, uh, that, that this, this exchange of data sets might be indeed the future of uh, taxation and the, the visualization tax administration 3.0 OECD publication uh, gives us is on the right side they say uh, from the left side forms driven uh, we do something periodical and historical it's all manually slow costly retrospective and uh, we, we work with disconnected ecosystems the, the future will look a little bit like data-driven, event-based, uh, detailed and real-time uh, validation and automation, uh, almost uh, real-time as well. Uh, it enables a short data. So is the 100 the right number or the 102? Tax authorities will also use different sources to validate that number. Um, you get much more uh, interacting ecosystem, which obviously, the minute you have a common standard amongst tax authorities, it would uh, almost inevitably create international cooperation. As we investigated recently, the tax authorities, uh, they do have specific information requests um, and, and they have uh, what is called spontaneous exchange of information. I think the spontaneous exchange of information is all the data that tax authorities collect and then throw over the fence to the other tax authorities. Uh, a, a recent investigation in uh, Europe uh, has proven that less than 10% of that data is actually used or, or even looked at because it's uh, not that well structured. So the whole data architecture and the whole data management is, uh, is so below uh, quality standards that it's very far away from what, what this says enables international cooperation. So we're not yet there, or in this particular case, the tax uh, authorities and tax administration are, are still far away from it, but we show you a few versions which, uh, which starts looking pretty much like this picture. So the next slide. So this is a little bit where we, uh, and this is a 2020 picture. So it's, uh, we're working on an update. We call it the tax technology heat map. So the, 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 if, if you uh, enter red zones, it means tax authorities are using tax technology uh, to assess uh, individual income tax, wages tax, VAT, customs, uh, corporate income tax, uh, and transfer pricing. Um, uh, using technology tools and and that, that means like Brazil it, it spread all over it it, it, it applies to uh, the tax technology used by the Brazilian tax authorities and Victor will share a light on that is uh, is eminently advanced compared to a few other territories in the world we see another country like Spain who has uh, has moved to a pre-clearance of your uh, invoices for VAT checking purposes. Uh, so that's uh, the, the red dot in, in Europe. Uh, probably if we, if we look at uh, the, the 
the updates we are uh, we're making on this list, uh, you would expect uh, countries like China to uh, to become more red. Why? Well, I'll give you one one explanation. One of my clients was filing its uh, transfer pricing report in China and got an uh, IDR, an information data request, uh, in five hours. Uh, so obviously that means uh, someone uh, has been working uh, an algorithm in the back which which validates, you know, if, if you're involved in transpricing, you know how complex filing of transpricing forms in China is, and the forms, the local file and everything else. If you pull that all together, it's a nice, a, a nice bunch of data to do analytics on. And uh, pretty surprised, five hours is uh, the, the, the quickest I've seen. Um, countries like Australia, who are more and more moving into self-assessment, uh, definitely will will turn color in the, the the next update as well. But this gives you an idea. Okay, where should we be worried about? Uh, the tax authorities use technology um, already. Is that just from a risk management perspective? Well, not really. It's also from, uh, do you already have your own car wash ready and able to use? Because if you don't and you still have to do the, the, the manual stuff, then you're, you're not good. Uh, you're not well prepared and probably won't make the deadlines. Um, let us give you one one example on, uh, on where tax authorities have taken it to the next level. I think that's on the next slide. The Singapore. So Singapore has uh, the, the Singapore Tax Authorities, uh, the IRAS has uh, taken uh, the, the slogan, uh, no service is the best servers and what you think really what what are they saying but they're basically saying if you have um, the the information uh, in your say your wages tax uh, uh, your, your accounts which run your wages tax filings you collect all the data uh, you, all the data for wages tax, uh, the gross salary, the, the various uh, social security and wages tax uh, payable. Um, you, in in the software you're running, uh, has been building a connector or an API with the software offered to open source APIs offered by the Singapore Revenue Authorities. So that means you can use a button in your in your own software, which has really released to uh, the data vault. So all the data um, you, you see uh, gets released to a data vault. The, the key to, uh, to the data vault uh, gets, um, gets released at the same time uh, to the tax authorities who can open with that key your data vault. They can uh, validate the data, they can uh, structure the data into a, a wages tax return, they can issue a final assessment if there's no outliers and no mistakes, and they can, uh, if there's a mistake, immediately return back to you and ask you to clear it. And it's almost like the same process you have for CBCR, you file it with the wrong home number uh, of, of the, 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 the address of the corporate, you get it back. So, so this is where um, the, the data exchange is taken one step further because the tax authorities do help you with filing the tax, completing the, the wages tax return and everything around it. So it becomes very much a data to data interaction uh, between uh, corporates, but in this particular case, even individuals, as well as um, the, the tax authorities. So this is today's world. It's uh, it's yeah, as as it says in the in almost like a sales pitch, seamless, personalized, and anticipatory, which means that they anticipate everything in a very um, how do you say it? A very service organ uh, service oriented but data driven organization.
So we don't see anyone uh, being humans to still interact with the Singapore tax authorities soon. That, that puts a, a, a kind of burden on communication. So it's always hard to argue with uh, bots working for the tax authorities, but it's also hard to, with the speed data moves to still control data uh, if it's already classified as clean data. Uh, so the whole process where tax typically only gets involved once the dirty data is turned into clean data, that's a little bit too late in the game. So your cleansing of data needs to happen when the dirty data is picked up uh, at source and, and you prefer to clean the source data at source rather than just before the filing needs to happen, especially with systems like this. Okay, if there's any questions, please uh, please load and, and share them through the chat box. We move to the next. And I give the floor to Victor. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Victor Pelliger, and today we'll briefly discuss how Brazil tax authorities modernize the traditional tax return system. Firstly, I would like to thank State for the invitation to participate on this webinar. The public digital bookkeeping system, known as PAD system, was introduced in 2007 and represents a technolo technological advance in the relationship between tax authorities and taxpayers. The SPAD system is a common initiative between the federal, state, and municipal administration to enhance the transparency and communication between these three bodies. The SPAD system is divided into different categories, for example, VAT, Customs, Transfer Pricing, CIT, Social Contribution, an Electronic Financial Statement, Payroll, and Electronic Invoices. On this image here, you can see that the taxpayer transmits the documents in a, in a text file or even XML files to the SPAD, to the SPAD database, which validates the, the, the file and then share with the other state revenues. For example, Santa Catarina, Sao Paulo, and Rio de Janeiro, which are states from, the, from Brazil. Uh, can you jump for the next slide, please? But why it was created? In a nutshell, it modernized the previous archaic system of compliance. With the SPED system, ancillary obligations are transmitted by the taxpayer using digital certification to ensure legal validity in this digital form. The SPED is composed of 12 different models with seven ancillary obligations and five different electronic invoices. Having all this information in one place makes it easier for tax authorities to notice any tax evasion or criminal activity by companies. For you to understand the level of detail, just imagine there are five types of di different electronic invoices. They, they all serve for different purposes. The most important are the NFCE, which are for goods and services, the CTE, which is a transportation of goods, and the NFCE which is an electronic invoice for natural persons, usually for end customers. And the information that needs to be disclosed in the invoice is the recipient and the issuers, the products, the taxes paid, who is performing the transportation, and the payment conditions. So the electronic system uh, communicates with each other. So imagine if you issue an invoice indicating that the company A is transporting the goods. But then the company A does not issue the invoice. For the tax authorities, this is, re this is easily detectable because there are going to be an outlier between in this, in this value chain. Apart from the electronic invoices, on top of that, there are seven ancillary obligations. I'm gonna to touch briefly in the most important of them. The eSocial is a program created to streamline HR and payroll information. The system requires to have full disclosure of employees, taxes withheld, vacation use, and benefits granted on a monthly basis. The ECD is a di digital bookkeeping system and is delivered once a year. It includes the following information, the account plan, the income statement, the annual financial statement, the carry loss for losses, and the alteration in the company network. 
The ECF is a digital CAT return containing all additions and exclusions. The EFD is a monthly VAT obligation, which includes the following information. Inputs and outputs, who is transporting the goods, and identification of all participants, information on the products, including the amount, type of products or services, and quantity. Also, the inventory, non-current assets, which are, good, uh, which are goods uh, purchased for their own use, which can credit it, and they follow a different kind of credit. Well, so let's say a car for a call, call rate on agency. The taxes paid and the credit deducted in each of the transactions. The e data is a tax compliance obligation for banks and financial transactions. So as you can see on this image, the taxpayer shared the issued invoice, which is validated by the state revenue and only then shared with the members of the chain. So they will have to wait for the validation to then distribute and integrate with the whole SPED system and communicate with each other. But it doesn't mean that you need to wait for the invoice to be validated to proceed with your transaction. There's going to be, uh, you're gonna issue a provisor invoice and the, your operation is going to continue and then afterwards integrate it in the whole SPED system. Victor. Yes, sir. Yeah, just a question because uh, the, the, this is a lot of information for people to process. So I, I'm always uh, impressed by by how many people work in house with tax departments of multinationals in Brazil. Uh, mm -hmm. If we if we present this version, it looks like the whole world of tax data in Brazil is fully automated. What, what is the reason between that disconnect where, where large multinational easily employ 100 people to get the relevant data on the table um, uh, 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 with an automated approach like this? Is that because the, the box taxpayers on your left is still not perfect while the tax authorities look into your system, your client web server, for example, real time? Is that the reason or is it because of the different types of taxes just makes it very complex and requires that many human brains. In, in, indeed, uh, that's, uh, that's how I'm gonna touch on this point already. And it's really difficult for taxpayers especially to guarantee consistency in all these ancillary obligation, which what, what does the tax authorities do? They have like a supercomputer in which they verify and process all the information regarding this, the, this information provided. So let's say, that uh, the, if there is an outlier in the value chain, this is going to be easily detected. What makes it really complex is especially for VAT purpose in which our VAT is divided into five different VATs, not only one, in which we have different competences of municipal, statural, and federal VAT. And therefore, we have different legislations in each state that you need to follow each of these legislation. So this is what creates the, the Brazilian system even though it's really technological advanced, the, it's really rigid in point of different legislation. This creates a really big challenges for all the multinationals that go to Brazil. And it's, and it's really difficult to indeed deliver uh, uh, consistent and integrated uh, conciliary obligation that indeed communicates with each other. So it's basically so, the, the, the big teams are making sure the, the data one data set used for multiple purposes of filing uh, is consistent. That's what I hear you say, but also to make it back up to the, the different laws and expectations uh, the different laws create and impose on, on these multinationals. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Even though, even though the, um, without, without the empowerment of tools which uh, we already issued the invoice automatically, it's uh, Brazil would be a living hell, but uh, with the, even though with the tools, it's a real challenge to comply with all the Brazil legislation. And in Brazil, this is really common where you the invoices you make the authentication and the invoices issued automatically by a system in which you input the rates. But even though we still face lots of codes that needs to be input on each transaction, a specific kind of transaction, I think we face more than 150 codes 
for each type of transaction, for example, return of goods. So it's a real challenge. And okay. um, the, spe the, spe the SPED system is communicate with each other and make uh, audits really way easier. In fact, Brazil has a supercomputer that crosses the information to identify outliers. But what does it mean for taxpayers? Is that we need to deliver consistent information, which is a huge challenge, as I said. The taxpayer need to be empowered by similar tools as the tax as the tax authorities use to file the tax to file the tax return. But even that does not guarantee uh, that an audit is not going to happen. Because imagine, imagine if a supplier issued an invoice that sold 100 apples to you, but in fact it sold 110. You might be accused of selling 10 without declaring, or the other way around. The the tax avoidance in this in this type of system became way more challenging because the whole tax avoidance scheme needs to be coordinated in the whole supply chain. Otherwise, an outliers of 10 is is going to be detected in one part of the supply chain in case anyone is going to declare this 10 this 10 outliers. But the but the question is is the system perfect no it's far from perfect because uh, the segregation into different modalities and different ancillary aggregations and numerous guidelines to be followed increases the complexity for the taxpayers but nevertheless it's a huge milestone for all tax administration around the globe to look for communicating and transmitting information between all the tax administration is a huge challenge that it's way ahead of lots of tax administrations. Uh, I see the future where all the tax administration talk to each other. And in fact, this is already happening. DAX6, for example, is already, is already implementing communication on a European level. I see global tax authorities communication to happen sooner than we expect. And we as taxpayer need to be prepared for it. This is the end of my presentation, and thank you for your attention. Do you have any Thanks. comments on that, Steve? Uh, no, I, I think uh, it's uh, the, 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 that's a big compliment to the Brazilian tax authorities. Uh, people sometimes are surprised that uh, countries in Europe do actually get trained by the Brazilian tax authorities on, on matters like this. But if you've seen the pictures and heard your story report, then it's, it's pretty clear why. Yeah, exactly. It's um, a um, really complex system indeed, uh, and the communication with uh, within this bad system is really impressive how it happens. Yeah. Even within the whole supply chain, this is really impressive. Very good. Thanks so far. Um, um, Ernesto has a question for us, uh, which has, um, in our view, what would be a high level roadmap for the taxpayer to process its digital transformation? Uh, that's a very important question, I think. Uh, and as no, the, the, the approach we are taking is uh, people, process, and technology. In, in, in other words, you need to, because people are the biggest hurdle, you need to inspire the people to, to see benefits in the digital transformation and not see it from a fear factor, oh, I'm going to lose my job. Then you need to be very professional and rigid on defining your workflow processes. So assume tax in-house tax has 100 work processes, which of the work processes are well-defined to be automated. And so that's your second step. And then only at that point in time, you are going to look uh, through the turnkey approach I've, I've been explaining in the beginning of this presentation, you're going to look for um, building blocks which enhance and facilitate the, that way of working in, uh, through a piece of technology. Uh, where one of the, the first questions I always ask uh, my, my clients is, uh, what, what, is the, um, what is the successful uh, digital transformation uh, you've accomplished over the last 12 months? Can you give me one example? Another question is, how is your, um, how is your working relationship with uh, IT and finance? The, the reason for that second question is quite clear, is that 
if either it's a perfect working relationship with finance and IT are always uh, uh, flooded with auto work, not having the opportunity even to prioritize your workflows, external tools might be the solution. On the other side, uh, I've come across quite some clients already where tax uh, worked in sync with finance and IT very in a very perfect manner and uh, localized or within the, the, the group itself, uh, uh, customized solutions could be uh, uh, leveraged from uh, the, the digital transformation already their finance colleagues have gone through. Um, the, 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 the key is that you have a tax and technology central group, which is multidisciplinary in terms of organization, uh, but also uh, is is very well in, in convincing the boardroom that this needs to happen. Uh, I tell you why. Tax in the old days was compliance, then planning made tax a sexy instrument within corporates. Now after BAPS, and, and maybe less so for VAT, but after BAPS for, for direct tax, the, the, the planning component has been uh, a little bit uh, sized down or, or significantly sized down in some companies. So the, the main driver for tax to stay relevant in business is if you are on real-time data and can facilitate your, your business people almost as a co-pilot on the transactions they're organizing or, or on the new business models they are running. Uh, so it's a it's an enhanced opportunity of tax, again, to be very relevant in a corporate setting, rather than being, uh, I, I put this very blunt, being put in the basement as, oh yeah, that's that's the guy from tax, they do only do uh, file tax returns uh, after everything important has happened. So so that's a, that's a little bit very high level roadmap um, where, where obviously, one critical element if you have uh, 100 workflows start with uh, the workflows at the top which are of the pyramid which are uh, unique uh, hardly repetitive etc and all the way down you find the uh, very repetitive easy to automate etc so really uh, make a priority list of what uh, what it is of the 100 workflows you um, you can take into the scope of, uh, of automation. But again, people, process, technology is uh, it's the heart of the matter. Anyone comes to me and says, so let's start with this beautiful car. It's red. Uh, I think it has an engine and it's called technology. Uh, and, and we don't have a process and we don't have inspired or, or motivated the people then there's a very high likelihood of, uh, of failure on that di digital transformation. So, and, and also just a, a, a quick highlight uh, on, on a roadmap uh, like that, but that's uh, that's our experience uh, over the last five years. And okay. state if I may add here as well. Yeah. On here in Europe, we have the advantage that uh, this system SPAD from Brazil was already introduced in 2007. And here we have the, the opportunity to be ahead of the tax administration instead of the other way around. In Brazil, the taxpayers are right behind the tax administration in, in terms of uh, analyzing and collecting the data. Here we have the opportunity in Europe to be ahead of the tax authorities and are ready to have a consistent information and not to be catched by surprise. Because already DAX 6, for example, which is uh, relatively simple, already is catching so many companies by surprise. So here we have the opportunity to be really ahead of schedule. Fair point. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. Uh, and also, I guess some of the technology which uh, the, the had a Brazilian tax authority set it up because there was a, a too complex system on VAT in different states with different uh, rates applied on different products and services. So there was only one way of tracking it and it was fully automating it. So, so that's sort of the trigger why the Brazilian tax authority started this. I think the technological tools and also some of the tools we showcased in our first uh, 
webinar series, uh, Building Blocks for Tax, already give you an indication there's a lot out there which is tested, uh, has, uh, has gone beyond proof of concept and can easily be used as Lego blocks to create, uh, to create a solution for your own uh, needs. So, exactly. Okay. I think uh, the, this transformation starts exactly in the mind of, in the mindset of the, of the head of tax and the people involved in the tax department to have a clear mind, which is the first step to take. Correct. Correct. Um, let's move to the next slide. So, courses of time, turn key projects. Here's a little bit what we discussed already, if I have accounts receivable, accounts payable with dirty data and I need to clean it, this is sort of the steps uh, to get the, the data cleaning steps. What you typically would like before it is classified as clean and clean means ready to share with the tax man. So this is a different definition when you talk to an IT person and you use the phrase clean data or a finance person, they will have def different definitions of clean data. So make sure you sync your terminology if you uh, have that dialogue. We move to the next slide. These are just visualizations. So if I get my accounts receivable and payables information um, and I fill my VAT return, if I extract uh, accounts receivable and payable uh, only the intercompany transactions then suddenly I have an intercompany transactional matrix if I feed that intercompany transactional matrix to my DAC6 software I can do the batch wise uh, uh, hallmark analysis uh, you typically do when you're applying DAC6 so what I've just done I integrated the dirty data to clean data to serve multiple purposes, which means uh, my data architecture and data management just has become 300% um, more smarter and easier to handle uh, than doing it on a siloed base. Uh, that's, that's also a process where, where a lot of companies go through at this moment. We turn to the next. Um, same. We already discussed it a little bit with uh, CBCR. Uh, what what are you doing? And uh, this is the full end to end, where even exchange between tax authorities is uh, is being uh, assessed. Um, next slide. Um, yeah, this is the eClear, where eClear is a next generation of a tax agency, which also has a banking license. So they basically can also pre-finance uh, certain positions and they, for uh, market platforms, they offer a zero VAT rate for the whole of Europe simply by putting themselves on the other side of the border um, as, as the commissioner between you and the client and that creates uh, with their banking license uh, obviously pre-financing the, the merchant on the platform creates a very lucrative model. eClear is now also um, uh, promoting and on the verge of stepping into an importer of record uh, uh, agency role so that really becomes a, a modernized next generation agent you're looking at, which is part of, again, uh, one of these uh, uh, car wash concepts and solutions, turnkey solutions. Um, next. Um, turnkey projects are, are in the works. Right? So our, our Lego for tax really pays off uh, we, we would certainly invite you to our next series of uh, of um, uh, webinars which starts again in August um, uh, tax administrations as we saw with tax administration 3.0 have uh, are undergoing a strong development but sometimes are uh, blinded by the light and what I mean with that uh, they have a, a lot of discussion with the Ministry of Finance the, the operational the tax authority should be doing this or a core team etc so that it's not uh, there's no common ground which which creates a little bit of problem for corporates why because 
uh, corporates have to fill in a lot of forms with the same data, SAFT form, CBCR, FAT returns, uh, the transfer pricing returns, uh, uh, tax 6 filings, uh, contains a lot of overlap. So tax administration have not cleared their mind yet uh, and gone through the political debate. What is the one spreadsheet with data I would like to get from uh, tax um, payers to have the full oversight. Um, as we said, the webinar series will continue with a new building block series in, in August. If we turn the page, I think we have a few names already we talked to or are in the verge of uh, talking to. Is there a next slide? I think there is. Yes, there is. So there's a few other um, uh, software packages we've been uh, talking to to showcase their functionality as part of this turnkey or building blocks for tax uh, webinar series. would like to thank Victor and every one of you uh, for participating. If there's any questions, please raise it in the chat, but I'm cautious of time, so maybe you want, would like to reach out to us straight away and then uh, address it to Victor or me or Rosanna. Thanks for this uh, webinar. There will be, in two weeks from that, there will be another webinar on recent trends, and then I mean 2020 and 2021 trends, on, on transfer pricing in Germany. There's quite some changes in legislation. So for anyone who's interested, uh, please join on July 7, same time on Wednesday. Okay, thank you for your attention and uh, have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day.